Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla Final Wars. Now, Godzilla Final Wars came out in 2004, and this is the 29th film in the Godzilla franchise, 28th if you don't count the 1998 American Godzilla. However, Zilla from that movie actually shows up in this movie. And this is the sixth and final film of the Millennium Godzilla series, which started in 1999 with Godzilla 2000, and for a while this was the final Godzilla film until Gareth Edwards and Legendary did their Godzilla reboot ten years later. Now, the film was directed by Ryue Kitamura, who prior to this directed a movie called Versus, which I know he's really well known for, but he would actually go on to direct the Clive Barker adaptation, The Midnight Meat Train. Now, I know a lot of people do not like this movie, and I could totally understand why, but you know what? I fucking love Godzilla Final Wars. I love it simply because of how unapologetically batshit insane the movie is. Like, this is probably the most insane film in the franchise, and that's even taken movies like Godzilla vs. Hedorah into account. Like, the film is not even remotely meant to be taken seriously. This is very much a love letter to the show. Godzilla series, but particularly the late 60s and early 70s Godzilla films, which was really where the franchise was at its goofiest. And because this movie is so batshit crazy, this is my second favorite of the Millennium series. My first favorite, of course, being GMK. Now, the movie is essentially a loose remake of Destroy All Monsters, but the film also takes inspiration from a lot of American films like The Matrix and Independence Day. And even X-Men to a certain extent. Now, it's worth noting that 2004, when this movie came out, was the 50th anniversary of the original Godzilla. So in a lot of ways, this movie feels like it's trying to cram 50 years of this character all into one movie. And the result is a mess. Don't get me wrong, the film is a mess, but I kind of like the film because of how much of a mess it actually is. Because again, the movie is not even remotely trying to take itself seriously, and in a way that kind of shows just how versatile this franchise is. You can have a Godzilla movie that's really dark and serious, and is actually more of a drama film like the original, but then you could have a Godzilla movie that's more of a kid's film like Godzilla vs. Megalon, and then you could have a Godzilla movie that's more of just a batshit insane action movie like this, or something like Godzilla vs. Is Mecha Godzilla. You could have a Godzilla movie that's more of a satire like GMK, or a Godzilla movie that's more of a straight horror film like Godzilla 1985. Again, this is a very versatile series. Now, what the plot of Godzilla Final Wars is it's set in a world that ever since 1954 has been ravaged by giant monsters, so eventually the governments of the world assembled a team of mutants to defend the Earth from the monsters. And at a certain point, they managed to trap Godzilla, the most powerful of the giant monsters, in Antarctica. But in the movie, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all these giant monsters start attacking major cities all over the world, all at once. And then these aliens, called the Exilians, come to Earth and apparently stop the giant monsters. Now, the Exilians claim that they come in peace, but it turns out this was all a ruse. It turns out they were the ones who released the monsters to begin with, and basically they want to subjugate Earth. So they once again release the monsters upon the Earth, and they also take control of the mutants, all except for one. So now it's up to the one mutant who hasn't been controlled and a few other characters to stop the Exilians, and eventually they wake up Godzilla to try to fight the other monsters that the Exilians have under their control. And eventually Mothra comes into the story to try to aid Godzilla in this fight against the other monsters. Now, the monsters who show up in this movie are, of course, Godzilla.
Godzilla. You also have Mothra showing up in this, who I mentioned before, but Mothra's role in the movie is actually relatively small. You do have the Shobajin showing up at a few points. The Shobajin are Mothra's twin fairies. You also have Gigan, and I like how Gigan, not counting the Exilians, is kind of the main antagonist of the film, or at least the main monster antagonist. Which I thought was cool, because Gigan's an underrated kaiju. You also have Minya, the son of Godzilla, showing up in this movie, and the scenes with Minya definitely seem to be paying tribute to Godzilla's revenge, where Minya has a special connection with a little boy, and also Minya starts out as being man-sized, but eventually he grows to being more kaiju-sized. The other monsters who show up in this are, of course, Rodan. You have Manda showing up briefly in the beginning of the film. You have Kamunga, the giant spider from Son of Godzilla. You also have Kamakaris, the giant mantis from Son of Godzilla. You also have Anguillus showing up in the film. You also have Hedorah making a very brief appearance. Ebra, the giant lobster from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, also shows up in a few scenes in this. You also have King Caesar from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. You also have Zilla, basically Tristar's version of Godzilla from the Roland Emmerich film showing up in this movie, and the CGI for Zilla is really freaking bad, but I'm wondering if it was done bad on purpose as sort of a joke. And Godzilla actually kills Zilla pretty quickly in the movie, and the alien leader, when that happens, says, Oh, I knew that tuna-eating monster was worthless. Now, at the end of the film, you get an appearance from a monster called Monster X, which, this is a spoiler, but it turns out that Monster X is actually King Ghidorah, or technically Kaiser Ghidorah. Masahiro Masuoka plays Ozaki, the main hero of the film, who's the only mutant who doesn't get controlled by the aliens, and there are moments in the movie where it's painfully obvious that they're trying to make him sort of like Neo from The Matrix where he's sort of like the chosen one, and they even do the whole bullet time thing. Kazuki Kitamura plays the Exilian leader, and I love how he's basically a spoiled teenager. Like, that's basically how he acts in the movie. He's just so over the top, and he basically acts like a whiny brat. Jun Kanamura, and I'm sure I'm not saying that name right, plays Major Kamoro. This actor would go on to be in Shin Godzilla. He was also in Kill Bill, and he played the devil in a really good South Korean horror film called The Whalen. You also have several series veterans showing up in the movie, like Akira Takarada, Kumi Mizuno, Kenji Sahara, Masato Ibu, and Akira Nakao also show up in the film. But to me, the person who really stole this movie was Don Fry as Captain Douglas Gordon, probably one of the most badass and hilarious characters in the entire Godzilla franchise. Now, I watched this movie in its original Japanese with the English subtitles, but even in the Japanese version, Don Fry is still speaking English while everybody else is speaking Japanese. They ain't even bother to dub him over in Japanese for the Japanese version. I thought that was freaking hilarious. But yeah, Godzilla Final Wars is just a really fun movie. It's not a particularly smart or well-written movie, but it is a lot of fun. And the movie also kind of points out its own plot holes. For example, you have Akira Takarada's character in the movie, who in the beginning of the film is kidnapped by the aliens, and at the end of the movie you see him and some of the other people who were kidnapped by the aliens escape, but it doesn't explain how they escaped. And Akira Takarada's character even says, We escaped somehow! But he doesn't say how they escaped, he just said, They escaped somehow. But yeah, Godzilla Final Wars, I do recommend, but I can only recommend it for the right kind of person. Like, do not be expecting any deep social commentary with this movie, like you would from the original Godzilla. Just be expecting a really fun, unapologetic Godzilla movie. Now, 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters, the most recent American Godzilla film, honestly feels like a slightly more serious version of this, because that movie, like this one, is also sort of this balls-to-the-wall monster brawl and really does feel like a love letter to the entire franchise. Now, it's not as batshit crazy as Final Wars is, but like Final Wars, that movie also received a mixed reception from fans and critics. 
Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to a short review, not necessarily on this movie, but a short review on the entire Millennium series by my friend Nick. Okay, the Millennium Era. I love this series, but that doesn't mean I'm blind to all the potential this series had and all the missed opportunities Toho failed to take with it. One thing they did do right is making the series casual viewer friendly. Each film is a direct sequel to the first one, retconning anything that came before it in one way or another. And that can make this series a good jumping off point for the everlasting, I want to get into Godzilla but I don't know where to start question that people like to ask. There's minimal prerequisite homework to do, if any, and not a lot of required hand-holding by a veteran fan of the franchise. But as far as opportunity, Toho really missed the boat on this one. Due to the fact that this is an anthology series, the possibilities were endless, especially when it came to the tone of these movies. For instance, one movie could be dark and sinister, while another movie could take itself less seriously and just be a fun all-out monster movie. Instead, what we got was just a copy-paste tone for each movie. Take for example Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters. Both great movies, but their tones are complete opposites. One is dark and tries to emulate the original, while the other is just a fun, all-out monster movie that says, if you want something more, like The Meaning of Life, that's too bad. Let's also not forget that this series really lacked original monsters. Orga and Megaguirus were awesome, but unfortunately Toho got really lazy and restored to recycling monsters. Sure there's Monster X and Kaiser Ghidorah at the end of Final Wars, but I'm talking about a title character, one that acts as the main antagonist. Now I know the Heisei era isn't known for its mass catalog of originals either, but here the lack of original monsters just seems more noticeable. Now all that said, that's not to say these movies should be avoided. They are very much enjoyable and watchable movies, and a few titles even make my personal top 10 list. It's just that there's so much missed opportunity here, it's upsetting that they didn't get a little bit more ambitious with what they had at their disposal. My advice would be not to approach these movies with super high expectations, and you'll have a good time. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed this video overall, but that was my review on Godzilla Final Wars, and my next movie review will be on Gareth Edwards' American reboot of Godzilla.